so um, yeah just using this burnt sienna very gently building up those lovely colours in the ear again with my ivory and just plot in some of these highlighting areas here um, and actually these once I get some more layers down these highlighting areas I'll probably use one of the new um, Derwent light fast pencils um, the oyster is a fabulous pencil for um, for highlights it's like a really really uh, pale pink so is is brilliant for over orangey coloured fur. It just um, it's, it just works really well. Plus it's it's so smooth that it kind of blends everything out underneath. Um, but I'm just going to add in these little bits of highlights here, and this is quite a highlighty area up here. So again, it's still not a particularly sharp pencil. Um, I know uh, there's a um, you know a lot of people get frustrated with pastel matte because you know they they, they feel that it eats their pencils and the their pencils go down very quickly. But to be honest, I don't sharpen mine a huge amount in these um, initial layers. Um, because I, I don't feel I, I need to have super sharp pencils when I'm working on this particular um, surface. Obviously, that's different for you know different different pencils, right? So down here, I've got some really quite bright oranges. So one of my favourite oranges is the um, the cadmium orange. Again, polychromos range, the cadmium orange. Um, I use this in my um, eye detail. Uh, I use it in my fur detail all of the time. It just just touches, not great big blocks of it, because I think that would be too much, but just touches of it just to pull out little areas. And I know we're still at the very early stages, but just pulling out these little areas um, just helps to helps to build in some of these strands of hair. So there's some strands of hair that go up here that are a little bit more orangey. Um, you know and this is where this is where the detail starts to come um, you know if I had tried to get all of this detail in right from the start without building in all of my tonal values I I, I feel I would have ended up with a stripy ear um, to be honest um, because you can see around here you know, you've got these lovely blended qualities and yeah I'm gonna go back in here a little bit with a with a you know um, and darken this area up a bit but you, you 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 know you're not getting stripy fur you're getting lovely blended um, hair on on this ear and and that's what that's what it looks like to the human eye you know you can't see every single tiny little fur uh, hair detail you, you can't see it you can see little stray hairs um, and that's a really useful thing to add, you know, after you've um, created all of your layers and you've, you've got some of the detail in to you to um, to add in the little bits of stray hair. Again, that's a really good thing to do as well, because what that then creates, if you start to create, it, it creates shapes that you can then go in and add more um, shadows and stuff to. Uh, so. Uh, OK, so we've got some quite orangey bits here and you can see how this uh, colour it does show up really nicely it doesn't just merge in with the others and, and create a, a, a dirty looking colour it merges in really nicely so you can see here where we've we've got it going into sort of like this Caput Morton violet bit here and then it's sort of a little bit more orangey and then we come down here you, you've you, 
because of the way we've put the layers down you are getting this graduation um you know you're 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 getting the pure orange here and then it's moving into the cap at mortem and you're getting this beautiful graduation without having to try so you've got this lovely area where you know the light's hitting it but you haven't had to try to create it, it it's done it itself with adding the layers in um that's quite exciting isn't it <laughs> okay a bit. i lead a very sad life And again, these um, the, the, the cadmium orange over the top of the ivory highlights that I've just added in as well, just really helps to create, you know, the, the, the beginnings of, um, you know, some really lovely fur detail in there. We don't want to go over the top. We don't want to go, you know, we don't want to go crazy with the um, with the bright orange. You know, we just want sort of like semblance of. And actually another really great um, ready colour for this type of spaniel is the Venetian red. We need to have a, there we go. Yeah, it's more of a pinky, um, a, a pinky red. But that again would be great for some of the areas in here where they are more pinky. So I'll just add that to my tin of colours right okay so i'm going to come back in again with the caput mortem violet again um and i'm going to start building up a few more of these dark areas up here you can see they're still quite grainy um so i'm gonna have to try and find a i'm probably going to use a warm gray i think just to help smooth those out uh, the warm grey too is quite a neutral colour and it's a really good colour for, for smoothing these darker grainier colours out. You'll find as you get used to this paper there are certain pencils that work really really well with other colours and help to kind of blend and smooth. I don't know whether you can see that looks quite grainy um, so I'm going to come come back in there with the um, with the warm grey too and we're going to um, but smooth that out a little bit okay I need to get some lighter colors in here now um, so I'm gonna go back to my cream and I'm just gonna I'm gonna sharpen it um, so my sharpener I'll show you in a minute, is a um, just need to be careful that I don't get stuff all over it but it's a I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. <laughs> it's a swordfish uh, curve. So my sharpener is a swordfish curve, um, and it's um, it's a crank handled um, sharpener, but it fits all of the different widths of pencils in. So from the polychromos to the prismas to the luminance to the pablos and the um, the light fast fits all of those pencils in. Uh, which is great and you get this lovely sharp point um, so so I'm just adding in this cream uh, the ivory sorry there's a there's hair that's kind of sweeping down and we've got some white bits here which I'm gonna add in with probably a warm grey I might use a white um, and I'm just gonna use this cream as well just to help smooth out. Can you see how it's smoothing out that cap at Morton Violet but without losing the colour? Just helping to smooth out that graininess there. So I think I need some pinky colour over the top of that. So I'm going to use I'm going to use the Venetian red, um, very 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 lightly over this bit here, just to add in that um, pinky colour on the top there. Yeah, that's good. And just sort of you know these little stray hairy bits I can come back to that at the end and and um, and pull some of them out again just to soften that uh, slightly and then we'll just 
build a little bit of that Venetian red into here as well. Um, and then back with the ivory. So I don't know whether you can see on the video, but we've got quite a few layers down in this area now. And the, the tooth of the paper is starting to smooth out a little bit. I mean, you can add countless more layers because I've used such soft pressure but you're starting to get a smoother look and a richer feel um, to your drawing now um, and this this is the this is the time where you can start to add in a little bit more detail um, so we've got And you can see because we've kind of left gaps and everything you know you've got these sort of um darker areas that are left behind and that then starts to give the idea of the, the hair being laid over the top of each other on the actual dog so that's a that's a really good thing so what i'm not doing is i'm not going in and drawing every single tiny little hair because that that would be overkill i think that you know you, you your brain would just go into um overload so the thing the thing with sort of showing clumps of fur and then the odd bit of um you know detailed fur is that your brain then fills in the gaps so and then i'm going to move back to using a little bit of that i'm going to sharpen this terracotta one as well So I'm going to just use a little bit more of this in here. So this is this is where the the the, um, the top of the dog dog's head is going to be. And there's a big highlight on this bit here, um, so I don't want to obliterate that. But I've got some orangey type um, bits of fur. That are coming into the this dark area here. You just need to be careful. Um, again, if I've used any blues or anything, which I don't think I have, that uh, it's not going to go green. So you, you know, just just something that's something that you've always got to keep in your mind, really. Um, right. Okay. So back to my cup of Morton Violet and just adding in some darker areas here so you can see now where I'm adding this again over that layer of the pink and then some of that Venetian red it's uh, going on a lot smoother but I still haven't used any hard pressure to get any of these colors um, you know it's just layering the colors over the top of each other okay and then I just need a little bit of So that colour is just sort of pushing into there. And because, you know, we can see these lines coming in, they're, they're then, they then are going to um, form the look of the fur that's coming down. And then I want to just add in some darker areas in here. because I want it to look like there's a bit of hair lifted here um, and this is the the shadowy area underneath okay so now I'm going to use if I can find it Um, 
so this is the don't like fast and it's the oyster um and it, it looks white but it's like um an ice pink it's like a really really light light pink um it, a great color a great color so it's relatively sharp and i'm just going to go into this area here and pull out some of the highlights and hopefully you'll be able to see how when it goes on it goes really really smoothly on i'm only using very light pressure again um when i talk about light pressure if you imagine um drawing on something like a tomato you are not looking to indent the skin or, or even if you drew on the back of your hand um you know you're not looking to indent the skin or trying not to indent the skin that is the type of pressure you're looking for when you're building these initial layers not all the way through because obviously you know you, you need to have harder pressure to get some of those those darker areas in um, but that's the sort of pressure that that um, I'm using really really light um, so I'm looking to add And the pink works really, really well with the orange. So we're starting to smooth this out a little bit, add some of these highlighty areas. And then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to use slightly more pressure because I want to indicate these few hairs that are coming down here that are almost white. Uh, but I'm not using crazy, crazy pressure. It's just, just a little bit more. And be, because we haven't lost any of the texture and the tooth of the paper, um, these are coming in quite nicely. So you can see that they're, they're coming in um, really nicely. And I can add, I can add to those later on. I can add a little bit of white in there just to just to um, just to pull them out even more. Um, but we're just going to go in here and smooth out this bit here. And we've got some. So this is this is starting to look a little bit something like um, so I'm now going to go in I'm actually going to go in the um, the polychromos black I am actually going to put some touches of black in here just for the the, the darkest bits um, so in this the crease of this ear in here I'm going to add but again very light pressure I'm not going in with with crazy pressure And, and if if I go wrong and I add something that I don't like at this point still um, I can I can um, layer over the top of you know if something's not working quite well or if I've if I've gone in a little bit too dark um, but I'm just making sure that I use really light pressure and you can see I'm I'm not using any great um, precise detailing here at all it's still quite a sketchy process um, but it's very light and down here we've got, it's really quite dark in this area here Now, there are some orangey bits of fur that are going to be sticking out over the top of this black. And what I'm going to use later on, rather than the tangerine, where, you know, we've discussed already, it might go a bit greeny. I'm going to use the sanguine, the polychromo sanguine, which is a great colour. Um, and you can use it over the black and it doesn't um, go green. Which is always a bonus. Okay. 
so this is this is quite dark in here which is why I've gone in with the black I didn't want to go in with the black straight away because um, I wanted to I wanted to have some sort of a build up with that color I don't want it just to be a flat black so using the cap and mortem underneath that but you can see now how this area is really starting to take shape um, starting to look really really quite nice I'm going to just pick out some of these areas here with the cadmium orange again just to brighten them up a little bit not a huge amount and I'm not like you know scribbling loads of color but just in places just to um, just to pick up that color very slightly and you can see how everything is is really starting to nicely blend together so there aren't any harsh lines um, it's all really nice and soft there are no stripy fur lines or anything like that it's all starting to work nicely together and that's down to your your soft layers um, and um, you know the use of the, the different pencils over the top of each other I mean, we still haven't used a huge amount of colour in here, but you've got a really nice looking ear. Um, so I'm just picking up the, the Burnt Sienna again and just sort of um, gingering off these bits up here a little bit more. I'm going to leave the top of this ear for now um, and kind of work down in this bit here, just darken up this shadow a little bit um, and maybe get a bit of stray hair going on as well. So you can see when I'm when I'm popping this shadow in, I'm not just putting a big solid um, block of colour in I am still blending over the colours that I've got there as well because um, the way the hair lies you've got shadow and light and, and all sorts of things and they're all sort of layered in in, in um, you know in, in different ways so if I just had blocks of colour you know you're not, you're not going to get the feeling of the movement of the hair the way the hair sits in the ear um, you just you're just not going to get that so. and actually it'd probably be quite useful just to add in this bit of shadow down here so the way I'm using my pencil here that the the, uh, the cheek the, the fur and the cheek and the um, the structure of the dog's face it comes down and you've got a big gap here this dog has got quite sort of sunken bits and then there's a cheekbone that goes round there'll be a big highlight coming here and then it goes round so the, the fur needs to go round that's that's how the, the skull goes so my pencil strokes in this area of the shadow they want to follow the structure of the dog's face so they're going round <clears throat> because then what can happen is you can meet this shadow in the same direction when you add the brownie bits and the highlight in this bit when you come to do this bit and you haven't got sort of like a you know a weird block of color that doesn't really um fit with what you're um trying to draw later on okay so this bit of hair there's quite a dark shadowy bit here as well which I'll just add again not using a massive amount of pressure I'm 
Okay. And then we come back to this bit here. And then we've got some quite dark bits in here underneath those areas. isolate those bits there but what I don't want to do is um, almost outline them with black and I, I need them to look like they are part of the fur you know so you need to be quite careful when you're adding shadows in like this that that it, it forms part of um, you know what you're drawing rather than drawing great big highlights around round hairs because that can look you know a bit a bit odd really um so once that the the darker shadow is in you know just pulling those out a little bit and even just going over the lines slightly just to soften but you've still got that semblance of the 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 dark area around it but you haven't got anything harsh um and that's not what we want you know we want really nice soft um soft fur detail okay so a bit there's a bit darker Add a bit more in here. So just being careful about where your darkest shadows are. Um, because what I've got here is I've got quite a dark area here and then there's another slice of hair that sits over the top so it's almost like in um, three or four different layers. So just being aware of that um so this this dark area here that is really quite dark so i can add a little bit more pressure but i'm still not really pushing down um and then there's this area that's slightly lighter so you can see the caput mortem shining through but then there's a little bit of a um, um, a soft layer of the black over the top of that so there's a, a definite or a, not a definite a very subtle change of color but it's definitely there um, which is what I was trying to say so and again in here this is a little bit darker here Moving into that dark area there, just being careful here that it doesn't go green. So let's just use a, that's just starting to go a little bit green there. So that's all good. And then I'm going to use my um, oyster again, just to pull in a little bit. Bit. it's not a bright highlight but it's a um, just a, a bit of a smooth area that's just coming into here oh, this pencil is just a dream you can see how um, I'm not drawing in every single hair but I am drawing in um, little you know the, these aren't particularly flyaway hairs at the moment but they're just little highlight details that that aren't bright bright highlights but they are they're helping to show how the um how the fur lies um and the the layering effect of the hair in the in the dog's um ear and these are they're, they're oil uh, pencils but they're um they're very soft 
so when you use them over the top of the polychromos um, they really do have this lovely blending quality it's um, they're, they're fabulous okay so now i'm going to put in a few stray hairs um, i'm just going to sharpen it very quickly it's, it's relatively sharp but um That's it. So we're, um, we're we're quite sharp, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a few little stray hairs around here, um, just so that we get the idea of of the layering effect of these um, of the hairs that are coming in. So you can see it works really nicely, light over dark. And I'm going to come. I'm going to use a harder pencil up here for these ones um, just because I want a little bit more control really so these these ones are really nice and they're, they're, they're quite um, soft but so you can see this is this is starting to really form um, you, you can see through the depth of the dog's fur you can see there's a top layer there's a bit underneath there's a bit underneath that there's a bit underneath that that's what's going to give you these really realistic looking um ears okay so i'm going to swap to a um it's a white pablo Caran d'Ache Pablo. Um, they are oil based, I believe. They are a fabulous, the fabulous pencils. The the white is um, a really good bright white. It's quite chalky, maybe the um, the texture when you put it down, but it's um, it works really nicely light over dark. Um, and you can get you can get really nice control um, when you're trying to put these these um, stray hairs in. So um, let's see what happens when we go in with this. Just to highlight a few of those bits, just to I think I mentioned before, just to sort of um, not the whole hair, but just little bits where the light's catching, just to pull out the um, the light in here. Turning your pencil um, when you're working with a sharp point turning your pencil on a regular basis will keep the point sharp rather than it, it grinding down on one uh, just in one place and then you get that flat sort of um, shovely type thing okay so I'm going to get these hairs in here I'm going to use really light pressure um, and just sketch them in I'm not going um, I'm using um, you know lovely light pressure and I'm just popping these hairs in because that's to me that's how they feel they're like stray flyaway hairs um so when i'm adding them the movement i'm using is like a um you know soft flyaway type movement okay and then i'm just going to add So we can see now this is you know this this part of the ear is starting to look really quite nice um I probably need a bit more fluff going on here um i might use a bit of 
the cinnamon at the top here just to In fact, no, I'm going to use I'm going to use the light flesh um, just to just to soften all of that area there. Just knock that orangey back a little bit and just add in. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I need to um once I come to do this area here I'll, I'll come back into this bit and add some more darks in there but I want to get the um, the colors and the highlights and everything in this area first um, but you can see here um, you know really how we've built up the layers um, you know we've built up um, the, the colors and the depth and everything and this is really starting to work now and and starting to build in this is how the the, uh, the detail is is built in at this particular stage so um, um obviously I'm, I'm going to carry on with the rest of the year uh, i'll share with you how the rest of the year is coming on but for this particular video just to show you how i start the year and then how i start to build all of that detail in hopefully that's going to give you um a little bit more of an understanding really as to how you can get lovely fur detail um it's not how long has it taken us oh i don't know an hour and a half something like that and i know it sounds like a really long amount of time but um you know you're, you're getting some really nice feeling fur in here uh, and some beautiful colors coming through and I, I just think it's um it's worth it so um yeah thank you for watching that i will um i'll carry on with the rest of the the ear and then um and share with you the uh, probably the finishing touches to to this area of the ear so you can see how i've worked it but i'm hoping that that's going to have helped some of you with your layering and um and blending <clears throat> So I've had uh, probably around an hour and 20 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, um, working from the end of end of what I videoed when I was uh, plotting all of the um, colours in to building up the detail, building up the, um, the shadow areas. Um, and we've now got a, a, an ear that's looking pretty good. Um, even though I say it myself um, so I'm just going to show you the, um, the, the the final final little tweaks to this ear I may well come back and revisit um, later on in the drawing it, it's um, there's still a, a long way to go on this on this little dog um, I've got a face to do and then her chest and then there's a, a fourth dog in the portrait but um, but you can see how I've built up the shadow areas um, I don't have any real harsh lines in here they're all blended really quite nicely together um, you can see where the hair the top hair sits on the top and then you've got um, it's layered backwards um, just like a um, you know a, a real dog's ear um, so it's just a case really when you get to this point of not overworking it not going in too much if you go in too much with um dark shadows in particular places you um run the risk of losing this lovely soft look and you will end up getting a bit of a blocky look with with stripes um which is um you know that that's not what i'm aiming for um so um yeah so i'm just going to show you how just adding some of these little stray hairs um, over the top of the ear really helps and then also um, just looking at some of the colors that I've used 
um, in addition to the ones I was using previously. So I've added in some of the Polychromos uh, Sanguine, which is um, a pinky orange and works really, really well over blacks. Um, I'll just add a little bit more in here so you can see. Um, so adding a little bit of hair detail here into this dark shadow, what you're not getting is that green tinge. You're still getting that lovely orangey look. So that's a fabulous pencil to use um, in shadow areas for, for colours like this. And then I've also added in the um, the Pablo Light Ochre. Uh, I've got another colour as well, which is similar, which is the Pablo Orangish Yellow. Um, they are very similar. Um, but I've gone for the Light Ochre. <clears throat> and I've just added um, little bits of this into this area here. Um, and into this area here just to give it a little bit more um, a little bit of extra something a little bit of yellowness um, uh, light yellow ochre in, in any of the pencil colors is a, a brilliant brilliant color to use um, so just sort of smoothing out any of these grainy bits that I can still see um, and then going in with I'll just pop this back just sharpen my white Pablo And I'll add a photograph as well at the end of the video, just so you can see, you know, how um, how smooth and everything the colours are getting. So I'm just adding in some little, little finishing touches um, here and there. And like I say, I'll probably come back in right at the end of the portrait and just touch up some of these little bits, adding in a little bit more highlight here and there. And then I'm going to add in some stray hairs. These are going in really, really lightly. Um, not, I'm not, um, I'm not being particularly structured in where I'm sitting them, but I just want the, I just want some, something extra, um, you know, so you, you, you probably can't see them when you're looking at it from a distance, um, but it just, it just gives the, the ear just a, a little bit, bit more realism really. So just touches of those in places. I'm not going overboard. I'm not co covering the whole thing with all of them. Um, and then just touching bits here. Now, I haven't added in the darker areas in here, which I am going to do once I've started doing the um, more of the head uh, detail in that, in that part of the head. Um, but um, basically, I am... Um, pretty pleased with how the ear has turned out so this whole area here has taken me probably about um three hours maybe which in the whole scheme of things isn't that bad because it's a complicated piece of the dog you know you've got these you've got these sort of curls and everything going on um you know it's not you've got different textures in there you've got different colors so actually three hours to create this part of the dog i think is um is pretty good and i'm and i'm uh, i'm really pleased with how this um ear has turned out so um i'll put a um a photograph at the end of the video um and then i'll do some more video with real uh, time voiceover as well uh, as part of this dog i'll probably do the the nose um, and maybe some of the hair up on the top here as well so that you can kind of see how I um, how I structure my drawings and how I how I uh, deal with different areas um, noses some people get really you know really worried about noses do you know what they're not scary they're not they're not particularly difficult um, you know if you just stick to a few little rules with noses um, you'll be absolutely fine so uh, thank you so much for watching my video uh, please do subscribe and please do comment um, you know if you loved it or you didn't love it <laughs> please do comment um, or, or give me a big thumbs up